mechanic. Remember that. Rob I adore Robbie Williams. You know, I just love his voice. I'm very, I feel very, very um, peaceful. You know. <laughs> Hello and hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Alright, today I'm going to do a reaction video by the channel of watchmojo.com. Please do subscribe to the channel to show our support to them. Alright, and today we're going to see a top 10 stand up comedy special of all time wow i bet it's very very interesting video to watch all right before we start as usual i would like to thank everyone who already supported me by subscribing my channel and for those who still not yet subscribe please do so because i really need it and i really gonna appreciate all you guys thank you so much good people all right without further ado everyone let's go and watch this video with me let's go yeah! all right guys ready let's get started these were the gigs that have been making audiences laugh for generations. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stand-up comedy specials of all time. Put this ring on your finger so people know we have an arrangement. <laughs> Before we begin, arrangement? we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most popular, influential, and of course, funniest specials from the world of stand-up comedy. Comedians from all decades will be considered, as long as they filmed a comedy special in front of a live audience. We're excluding comedy specials and audio-only specials at this time. When we get home, I'm whipping your ass for putting me in that situation. Number 10, Bill Hicks, Relentless. A lot of Bill Christians Hicks. wear crosses around their necks. Do you think when Jesus comes back, he ever wants to see a f***ing cross? <laughs> Bill Hicks' abrasive, no-filter style has often been imitated, but never duplicated. The Georgia native Whoa. was a comedian's comedian, one whose satirical and transgressive approach served as a huge influence for future stars like Dennis Leary. While a CD with the same name captured his last show before his 1994 death, the relentless oh. show released for home video was filmed at a different time, during Montreal's Just for Laughs Festival. What did moths bump into before electric light bulbs were invented? That's what I want to know. And it showcased the comic at the peak of his powers. Smart, sharp, and confident. Hicks never shied Smart, away from being rash and, and satirical with his work, caring less about laughs and more about challenging audiences every step of the way. And Relentless perfectly documents that. I'm Bill Hicks and I'm dead now. Because I smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes didn't kill me. A bunch of non-smokers kicked the shit out of me one night. <laughs> <laughs> Number All right. nine, Comedy Central presents Mitch Hedberg. I'm going to do an Mitch entire Hedberg. special not facing the camera. Mitch Hedberg Why? had a unique perspective on comedy and a delivery that had fans dying of laughter in the aisles or scratching their heads in confusion. Comedy Central presents Mitch Hedberg may have started out as simply another half hour of comedy from the channel's long running series, but it ended up as an early showcase for one of stand up's most promising stars. Like we're in wow. it's like being strangled by a really weak guy. The special was simple and to the point, broadcasting Hedberg's shy, stoner stage presence with a barrage of wordplay one-liners that were instantly quotable. Hedberg's 2005 death may have robbed the comedy world of his great potential, but at least we have these laughs to remember him by. I taught myself how to play the guitar, which was a bad decision, because I didn't know how to play it. <laughs> so I was a shitty teacher. A shitty teacher? Number eight, Sam Kinison, Breaking Sam the Kinison. Rules. This one, guys. 1997. Breaking the Rules was released right at the cusp of Sam Kinison's major mainstream success as the louder than hell voice of heavy metal comedy. The 1987 HBO special brought together all of the comedian's fantastic early material with a delivery, which by this point was honed to perfection. We're giving you the money, how come there's no cure? Jesus, will you hurry up? <laughs> Breaking the Rules touched upon such taboo subjects as religion and necrophilia, while at the same time. Necrophilia? This is first time for me to to okay. Some if somebody can help me, ne what is necrophilia? Time making the most of Kennison's early life as a Pentecostal preacher. Necrophilia. Sam was all fire, brimstone, and hilarious anger, possessing an almost effortless connection with his audience that even today is absolutely remarkable. I love those churches out there, man. <laughs> 
I saw one the other day, it says, we're the church where everybody's somebody, but Jesus is Lord! Number seven, Robin Williams, live on Broadway. Robin Williams! I'm here right now, but it's HBO because it's live. <laughs> Robin Williams had nothing to prove when he released his fourth HBO special. The actor and comedian was already a certified star at this point, and long removed from his Mork and Mindy days. As such, Live on Broadway showcases a supremely confident Williams on stage in front of a ready and willing New York crowd. And if you're ever in Amish country and see a man with his arm buried in a horse's ass, that's a mechanic. Remember that. Rob I adore Robbie Williams, you know. I just love his voice. Very I feel very, very um, peaceful, you know. It's like a father. Robin touches upon then topical subjects like Michael Jackson and Anne Heche, but it's Williams' observational humor and natural delivery that are the real gold. Live on Broadway is all manic and relentless energy, a portrait of a comedic artist that makes his absence all the more poignant today. I remind Jamaica would never make an atomic bomb. <laughs> they make an atomic bomb. Number six, Louis C.K., Shameless. Bomb. Okay, we'll address the elephant in the room. In 2017, Louis C.K. confirmed Louis. multiple reports of sexual misconduct, tarnishing his reputation as one of the great comedians of his generation. However, taken on its own merits, his 2007 stand-up special Shameless still resonates as a prime example of C.K.'s power as a comedic auteur. Nobody wants to blow a guy and then go to Ikea with him all day. That's not fun. <laughs> Many comics have reflected upon the minutiae of everyday life, but none has done so with quite the same skill. When you're all looking at each other going... <laughs> <laughs> I just like his face. <laughs> silent movie of impatient people. You know. <laughs> it's a silent movie? Yes. Louis is a master of redirection starting down such normal paths as marriage and parenthood, but ending up with punchlines that are revealing and dark, yet simultaneously side-splitting. It's a wonder to behold, and Very essential unique. viewing for anyone interested in the art and pathos of comedy. Who can get past the general ickiness that is? I love to shit. It's my favorite thing. I don't know why they call it number two. I think it's easily the best one. It's in my book, it's number one. Number five, Richard Pryor, live Richard in concert. Pryor. And I always had to box them dudes that look like they just killed their parents. Choosing the best of Richard Pryor's work is a difficult task, but live in concert ranks up there not only in Pryor's enviable career, but also among the finest stand-up performances of all time by anyone. Sit your ass down. Pryor's influence as a comedian cannot be understated, and Live in Concert showcases Richard at the height of his prowess as a cultural commentator and storyteller. Sure, it's profane as hell and not the least bit politically correct, but it's also a hilarious and vital moment of the man's career, and is an essential part of any proper comedy education. You're not gonna leave her till you piss in that bottle. <laughs> and you never can piss, you ever tried it? <laughs> so can you turn on some water, please? Number four, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. The pain. If OJ drove a bus, he wouldn't even be OJ. He'd be Orintho, the bus driving murderer. He may be a household name in comedy today, but it was a slightly different story when Rock shot his second HBO special, Bring the Pain. The performance solidified the inimitable Rock delivery we know and love, and also shot the comedian into the public eye, completely rebounding his career. You know what a platonic friend is to a woman? It's like a dick in a glass case. Yeah! Chris didn't shy away from anything and bring the pain, commenting on touchy subjects like race with a voice that was both humorous and furious. Rock would double down only two years later with Bigger and Blacker, a performance that only echoed the comic status as one of the premier stand-up voices of his generation. I'm at Kenner House. That's a man's lie. A woman's lie is like, it's your baby. <laughs> Number three, on location, George Carlin at USC. I mean, most of the time, ass is all right on television. You can say, well, you've made a perfect ass of yourself tonight. But you can't say, you half ass. George Carlin was a true <laughs> wordsmith, a man whose usage of the English language was honed to a razor's edge and a hunter's accuracy. Live at USC was Carlin's first HBO special, and as such, he was basically exploring what could be considered new territory in 1977. Go into the supermarket in the head neighborhood and Take a look at the cookie section. Cookie section? In fact, network execs were so worried about Carlin's famous seven dirty words bit that they actually froze the feed 
and included a message informing audiences about the language used before continuing with the special. It may seem quaint today, but this is just a small example of how much impact Carlin had as one of comedy's finest voices. You can't say, uh, you can say teats. Teats is okay if you're on at five in the morning and a cow is your guest. Oh. Number two, Dave Chappelle, Killing Them Softly. Can't have no Killing Them here. Softly. He be selling Dave nuclear Chappelle. secrets for $20, $30 and shit. Before Chappelle's show turned him into a household name, Dave Chappelle was slaying audiences with his inaugural HBO special, Killing Them Softly. Comedy ages, and some specials don't hold up, but Killing Them Softly is just as funny today as it was back in 2000. A real and honest collection of material from one of modern comedy's defining voices. Yeah, Oscar, you're a grouch. Like, bitch, I live in a f***ing trash can! The <laughs> of Richard Pryor and Red Fox echo loudly in Chappelle's work while his delivery is smooth and conversational like a close friend. Killing Them Softly is low-key and unassuming, but like all great comedy, it's also personal, real, and honest. David, we need to talk. Okay. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Three things you could see from, from, from the outer space. You could see the Great Wall of China, you could see uh, the, the Grand Canyon, you could see Oprah Winfrey's ass. Those are three. I'm not into that one night thing. I think a person should get to know someone and even be in love with them before you Steve Martin. use and degrade them. Are there any Asians or blacks in the back? That's going to be the name of the DVD. That's it. That's the name. Number one, Eddie Murphy, Delirious. Eddie Murphy. Everybody whip out their dick move. Is there any stand-up special as popular or influential as Eddie Murphy's Delirious? This 1983 performance turned Murphy into a legitimate comedy badass, a rock star decked out in iconic red leather. I wish I was red leather. Spanning color. Eddie already made serious waves during his tenure on Saturday Night Live, but delirious was when the stars aligned just right, and Murphy truly broke out into the mainstream. Although the AIDS and homosexuality material hasn't exactly aged well, delirious on the whole is something combustible and cosmic, a perfect storm of look, talent, and delivery that has rarely been equaled by any comic past or present. Goonie goo goo to you, good sir. Goonie goo goo for me. Sing is something about singing. That's the business. You sing, women go crazy. Cause Mick Jagger is an ugly motherfucker. Well, that's it. The top ten stand-up comedy special of all time. And may I know which one is your favorite? And for me, I just love. Um, uh, of course, Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, and my favorite is Robin Williams, of course. I just love his style, I just love his voice, and each one of these comedians actually have their own um, personality, have their own style on stage, and for me, it's a very great uh, to, have, to have them with us um, it's not easy to be a comedian it's not easy to make people laugh like crazy <laughs> because they have to think a lot of things before they perform and I just re all my respect to all the comedian and yeah it's not easy to be a comedian and once you were there you are someone that very special <laughs> Alright, I think that's it for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video with me. If you like this video, please do share it and liking it. And I hope to see all of you again on my next video. Thanks for watching with me. Take care everyone. Goodbye. You went away. You've been